Many of the applications we deploy in Kubernetes are not standalone applications. An application may require some kind of connection to an external service like an S3 storage bucket or a Redis cache or a database like Postgres. So to quickly provision, say, a Postgres database in your cluster, you may use such a manifest. This is a manifest defining an object of kind database. At the very top, we see the API group and version to request in order to provision this resource. The name and the namespace of the database are specified along with its username and password. So watch what happens when we apply this manifest. This new database object gets applied successfully. If you run a kubectl get database, we can also see that we indeed have a newly created database object in the cluster. When we log into the Postgres server instance and list the databases, we also see the same database also created on the server. So you might be saying to yourself, wait a moment, I don't recall there being such an object as a database in Kubernetes. And of course, you are right to say that we do not actually have any such objects in Kubernetes, at least not natively. So what we're doing here is taking advantage of Kubernetes extensibility and adding our own APIs and resources. And this is all possible through crossplane. Crossplane is an open source Kubernetes extension that transforms your Kubernetes cluster into a universal control plane. It lets you manage anything anywhere all through standard Kubernetes APIs. So if you need to provision a resource for use in your cluster, and this may be one provided by a cloud provider like an AWS S3 bucket or your own on-premise resources like database servers, Crossplane can help you easily manage them as though they were natively installed in the cluster. This also means that any objects you create with Crossplane benefit from all the cool features we like about Kubernetes. For example, your new managed resources will also benefit from the Kubernetes controller logic, which helps maintain the desired state of a resource. This is similar to when pods get recreated when they are deleted, as long as their parent object like a deployment or a stateful set still exists. We can also apply Kubernetes policies to new managed resources, scope them to a single namespace, or even control access using role-based access controls. So how exactly does it work? How do we get to the point where all we need is a simple manifest, like the database manifest we tested in the beginning to provision an external resource in our cluster? The first thing we need to do, obviously, is to install Crossplane. This can be done with this simple Helm command. This will install the main Crossplane components in the Crossplane system namespace. An init container in the Crossplane pod will install all the custom resource definitions, like composite resource definitions, compositions, configurations, and providers. You can check with the kubectl api resources command that all crds are now available in the cluster so now we have crossplane running but in addition to that we need to install a plugin that will enable us to provision resources on an external service these plugins are what crossplane refers to as providers the most widely used providers include providers like aws google cloud platform and azure Several community-driven providers like Terraform, Ansible, and OpenStack are also available. There are a lot of resources out there that can help you find supported cross-plane providers, including the upbound marketplace. So you can check and see if a provider you are looking for is available. Now, what I've done is installed a local own cluster Postgres instance on which I can create databases for use by any application running in the cluster. Terraform is very good at working with several database servers, including Postgres. So let us install it as the cross-plane provider we will use to create and manage databases on our existing Postgres server. This can be done with this provider manifest, where we specify the name of the provider and under package, we specify the address and version of the Terraform provider plugin. We can apply this manifest and run kubectl get providers to show the status of the newly installed provider. If you check the cross-plane system namespace, you should see the new Terraform provider pod. This pod contains the Terraform CLI client, and it is also where all the terraform.tf files are stored. 
Now, in order to configure the Terraform provider to connect to our Postgres server instance, we need to create a secret with the connection details. So we can create a Terraform auto.tfvars file with Postgres server IP and port, as well as the username and password. Then we can issue the kubectl create secret from file command to create the secret. We will use this secret in the provider configuration. To configure the provider, we create a manifest of kind provider config. We configure authentication for the database server under the credentials section, which we do by specifying the secret we created earlier. This will result in a file named credentials.auto.tfvars being created in the same directory as the main.tf file. The auto in the file name causes the variables to be auto imported into the Terraform project. Then under configuration, we create what will essentially be the provider.tf file. We define the PostgreSQL provider and just keep in mind that this is a Terraform provider and not a cross-plane provider. We set the connection and the authentication configuration with variables obtained from the credentials.auto.tfvars. Before we can use any variables, however, we must first declare them, which is what we are doing here in this section. We then set PostgreSQL under the required providers and set the source and the version. And by the way, all of this syntax should look very familiar if you have worked with Terraform before. Then finally, we add this backend block, which describes the secret where the Terraform state will be persisted. So in this configuration, we'll save the project.tf state files in the crossplane system namespace, and all the secrets should have this suffix. This helps maintain the state of your Terraform projects in case the Terraform provider pod restarts. Then we can apply this manifest and verify as well that we have a working provider config. So at this point, we are ready to start working with managed resources. So when a Terraform provider is installed, it creates a workspace managed resource that represents a Terraform workspace. You can use the kubectl api resources command to verify that we have a new CRD added for this exact purpose. Now you can think of a workspace as a single Terraform project. When you create a workspace object in Kubernetes, a Terraform project directory with all the configured.tf files is created in the Terraform provider pod in the cross-plane system namespace. So now let us use this workspace object to define a Terraform project. This is what the workspace manifest looks like. We set the name and the namespace for the resource and in the for provider section, we can configure a source for the Terraform files. The project should ideally be pulled from a Git repository. And to do that, you would set the repo URL as the value for module and set the source to remote. You can also specify the main.tf file in line, which is what I'm going to show you how to do here. So as you can see here, this is a standard Terraform main.tf file. I'm creating two main resources, which are the PostgreSQL role and the PostgreSQL database resources. So this is the minimum configuration required to create a new database, a user and a password with access to the database. And so we can have the DB connection details available to store in a secret. We set some outputs for each bit of information that we require. These details are stored in the secret defined in the right connection secret to ref section. Finally, we set the cross plane provider to use under provider config ref. We can now apply the workspace manifest and run some verification tests. kubectl get workspace should show the newly created workspace. The value of synced is true when the provider has successfully requested the remote service to provision the resource. And then once the resource is provisioned and ready to be used, the value for ready will also turn to true. If either of these values are still false, even after a while, then you can describe the workspace object and execute the provided echo command to view the error log. This should give you a hint as to why the resource is not coming up. We can also check the secrets in the default namespace and verify that we have a newly created connection detail secret. A secret with the workspaces TF state should also be created in the cross-plane system namespace. We can also log into the Postgres server as well and list the current databases. And if we configured everything correctly, we should be able to see our newly created database. So admittedly, although this greatly simplifies the process of provisioning databases on an external server, 
the configuration still looks a little complex. So to solve this, we need to use cross-plane compositions. A composition is a template that can be used to compose individual managed resources together into a reusable solution. Compositions enable us to deploy a managed service in multiple configurations based on a user's requirements. So let us turn our workspace managed resource that creates a Postgres database into a customizable reusable resource. Uh, we can create a composition like this and then under the resources section we can specify all the managed resources we need as part of this composition. Remember that it is also possible to combine several managed resources into a single composite resource. For this example, however, we'll just keep things simple and define a single resource. We can set the name of the resource as database. And then down here under base, we can specify the entire workspace managed resource that creates a Postgres database on a Postgres server. The workspace object is similar to the standalone manifest we used earlier to create one-time database except for a few additions. We add some extra variables so we can be able to change the properties of the database definition on the fly. We specify the values of these variables in the var section. And as you can see here, we have variables for the database name, the user and the password with some default values. And so we can use the variables in the Terraform project. We have also declared them in the main.tf file. Now above here, we have a section of patches. The patches specify the fields in the managed resource manifest that you want to replace with fields defined in the composite resource, which we are going to create shortly. So the values we set in the composite resource will be used to override their corresponding values in the vars section. This is done using a patch of type from composite field path. There are a number of patch types you can use depending on what you mean to achieve. Another example is the combined from composite patch type which we are using here to generate the name of the connection secret by combining the name of the composite resource and the dash db dash con string. Moving on in the main.tf file, we will use the random password resource to generate a random password in case no default password is specified. And then just like we did earlier, we configure outputs for connection details. Finally, under the composite type ref, we define the API version and kind of the composite resource that can be used to create this database resource. Then we are all good to apply this new composition. Notice that we get this warning saying that the custom resource definition is not found. This simply means that we are yet to create a composite resource definition. For the composition we just created to be of any use, a composite resource definition or an XRD is required. An XRD is a schema for a custom API which is accessed in order to create the resource described in the composition. Crossplane's XRDs are just like Kubernetes custom resource definitions with a few extra fields and options specific to Crossplane. Let us create an XRD for our composition. This is what the manifest looks like. So here we can set the name as databases.homelab.io and the API group as homelab.io and then set the kind, the plural, and the version of this API. We set referenceable and served to true, which makes this API available for consumption. Then under schema, we define the properties or spec for this resource. So this object should have a credential section with a username and password field. We can now apply this XRD to create our new composite resource. If we also reapply the composition manifest, we should see that the warning disappears. A kubectl get composition shows the new PostgreSQL database composition, the database XR kind, and the XR API version. We can also run kubectl API resources and grep homelab.io to see that the new database CRD is now available in the cluster. So now we have all the prerequisites in place to start creating databases directly from the cluster. We have created a composition that templates a managed resource as well as a composite resource definition, which has created an API that can be accessed to provision a database resource. So now to create a database, it will be as simple as defining it in a database manifest. We set the name and namespace of the database as well as the username and password for this database. We also specify the composition we want to use as a template for the database under composition ref. We can apply the manifest to create the database. 
A kubectl get database should show the newly created database. We can also run kubectl get workspace to see the workspace that is a child of the database object. If we check the Postgres server, we should see that the new database has been created. We can do a kubectl get secret to get the connection details and credentials. We can also attempt to connect to the database with the provided credentials, which should drop us directly into the database. We can also delete the database, which will go ahead and delete all the resources created as a result. So with this configuration, you now have the basic scaffolding required to provision an external resource in Kubernetes using Crossplane. I'll have the GitHub repo with the commands and the manifest files linked in the description, as well as a readme file with step-by-step -step instructions. Thank you again for watching, and if you'd like to support the channel, please like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.